Hey guys, here are your predictions for your first AQA physics paper. Now, you have to remember that I am not an examiner, so I do not know exactly what is going to come up in the exams. I'm just a teacher who's done a lot of thinking and a lot of research, so please, after you've watched this, go and watch the whole topic video, revise everything, use the checklist in my revision guide to make sure you've covered everything and you know it really, really well. Like all the other prediction videos, to go with this over my website, I've done a predicted exam paper, so you can sit there, go through and try all of the questions that I think might come up. Now we know for physics that 30% of the qualification is going to be maths. That is a huge, huge chunk. So it is vitally important that you know all of your equations, that you have your flashcards for your equations and your units sorted. Because while the maths in biology can seem quite random and weird sometimes, the maths in physics, I know it doesn't seem like it sometimes, is really quite straight forward. If you can work out which equation to use, you plug the numbers in, do the maths and then write the units down and that can generally be a solid four mark question without having to actually write very many words at all. You just need to practice doing this. There are a few things you need to look out for with your maths and physics. You need to check that they are in standard units. For example, there could be something in centimetres and first you need to convert it into metres before you can do the equation. Or something that is in grams which you need to convert into kilograms. This is a common thing they do. You also need to be aware of rearranging equations to make sure that the subject of the formula is the thing you actually want to find out. Once you've done all of that, just put the numbers in that they give you in the equation. Do whatever you need to do, multiply them, divide them, and then give your answer. There is generally going to be one mark for writing down the units, so please learn them. Like with the equations, I've done you loads and loads of videos and flashcards. Videos are on here, I'll link them down below. Flashcards you can get from my website. Please, when you're writing your units, make sure you get the case correct. So I mean uppercase and lowercase. Newton's is a capital N. You will not get marks for writing it down a lowercase n. Hertz is a capital H and a lowercase z. Anything else will not get the marks. And one mark for writing one or two letters? Who doesn't want one mark for writing one or two letters? So please, please, please. I know I've been nagging you about this the entire time. Learn your units and learn your equations. Now, if your mind goes blank and you cannot think what the equations are, don't you leave the question blank. Just try multiplying the two numbers together because like quite a lot of the time, about 50% of the time, that's actually what you need to do. So if you really can't remember anything else, if you're really, really stuck, if you can't remember your equations, can't remember the units, just take the two numbers and try and multiply them together. That way you might get some of the marks. We know that another 15%, so already we're up to 45%, nearly half of the exam, another 15% is all going to be about practicals. And we've done quite a lot of practicals for our GCSE. So we've done ones on specific heat capacity, and we've done loads and loads on circuits. Circuits is a big, big thing in this. Circuits, circuit equations, loads of stuff about electricity comes up pretty much every single year. So make sure you know your circuits and your electricity equations really, really well. There are a few things that have moved around, like densities. So the examiners might want to examine you on that because it's something new, something a little bit different. So maybe your teachers aren't used to teaching that very well. But then there are a few things, like circuits, that keep coming up over and over again. So electricity generation. Um, how the different forms of electricity are generated, so fossil fuel, nuclear power, there's Prim in the background, say hello Prim, hello everyone, good luck in your exams, thanks Prim. Um, what was I saying, so electricity generation, fossil fuels, nuclear power stations, the different types of renewable energy, the advantages and disadvantages to all of these. It is really important you get these sorted. And then radioactivity, so the different types of radioactivity, things that it can be used for, your radioactivity equations, so this could be a way that maths comes into it, but not kind of like uh, plugging things into equations, so half-life equations, radioactive decay equations. <coughs> So that is what I think is going to come up in the exam, but like I said, I don't know for sure, so please go and watch the whole topic video and revise absolutely everything. For combined science, this is where the video ends, so good luck guys, um, I'm going to read you every single step of the way. Don't forget, I've done these and whole topic videos, quick fire videos, 
um, and seven, eight, nine question videos for every single exam for you. I'm going to be here with you every single step of the way. For separate science people, for paper one, there isn't actually a lot more extra stuff. There's a bit on nuclear fission and nuclear fusion. These are really, really common questions that come up over and over and over again. And there's a little bit on stuff on volume of the gases, which is really, really common or is common with chemistry. So this comes up in physics and chemistry. So these are things extra that they could ask you questions on. So good luck, guys. I'm keeping all of my fingers crossed for you.